I was born in one of the most polluted cities in the world, according to a study conducted in 2010. That city got into top 10, and I think it was the seventh city in the world that was most polluted by uranium radiation. You have probably heard about like Chernobyl and stuff, but my city is actually pretty close to that list pretty close to the position that the city that city went through the interesting thing is that there are people and there are a lot of people there are something like 25,000 people there are schools there are kindergartens there are jobs just a regular city but nobody really understands how how much radiation there is it's like one of the stories that i heard is like away from the city the road that leads to the city like 120 i don't know 90 kilometers something like that when you bring up the i don't know what the name is of that thing that measures radiation it starts beeping literally on the road to the city the city has a river a very strong current river a mountain river it's wild it's wild it's and one of the worst things about it is that not that many people have died there but the fact that many radiation shafts many shafts that have been exposed actually leak into the river so what happens is that from the city from the mountains the radiation goes to the city and goes even further to uzbekistan which is which is crazy the city is uh, in a very very bad condition it's it's not like a village when everybody knows each other when there's like a community but it's not a city either it doesn't have a good infrastructure it's literally like a i don't even know how to say like a ghost from the past the only thing remaining that seemingly works as good as it used to is the uh, electrical bulb uh, factory which actually produces 90% of the bulbs in our country like if you go to a regular house when they have uh, you know like the regular nickel bulb light bulb it was definitely produced in that factory <clears throat> that factory was actually built after the uranium extraction it was built to kind of sustain the rest of the city the remainings of the city like the people who were working at the mining shafts have to go work somewhere right one of the easiest things that Soviet Union could do was that. About uranium. I remember my mother actually used to tell a, an interesting story about it. So it's like this. At the very top of the region around the city, there's like a village. Then there's a city. Then there's another village. And the road goes like this. And it connects to the main highway of the country so when you go to the topmost village there are mountains everywhere my mother used to tell me that if you wake up in the morning and go to a mountain you could see the mountain reflecting of the sunlight like as if there were thousands and thousands of silver coins or silver 
drops, you know. And if you take and if you took a closer look, it's actually lead. And not many people understand how poisonous lead is, but that's another story. The thing is, where did that lead come from, and why is it literally on every mountain over there? Lead, I think. I think actually, lead used to be a radioactive. It used to be uranium, basically, and after a lot of time, lots and lots and lots of time, it kind of just calms down and becomes lead, which is poisonous as well. It's not as dangerous, but still. So you can literally see lead exposed on the mountains. It was that much. Nobody talks about it. Nobody. Literally. Look, I lived there for 14 years until I was 14 years old. I lived there. And the most that people could tell about radiation is that, uh, yeah, it used to be there. It's not anymore, so it's fine. But it's like, when they're when the fruit or vegetables I don't know whatever grows up and becomes ripe you will notice that like 30 percent 20 percent of them are doubled literally doubled like an apple is growing out of another apple it's not normal it's not it's not and you, you could literally like notice that every single time when you were I don't know we had some apple trees we had a cherry tree and when you were picking them up you can literally notice that every single time which is just crazy it was that bad but nobody tells about it media like media doesn't even know as if it's just nuts the government doesn't talk about it the media doesn't talk about it the fact is the information that I'm giving you is mostly from stories and the kind of I read a couple of blog posts and stuff some research from West resources that's the thing from Western resources and yeah the let's talk about history right so the city was formed in 1940 some things I, I don't know whether it was formed during the war or after it but I certainly do know that uh, captured German soldiers were sent there like prisoners, like slaves, literally, because after the Soviet Union was over, there were literally German people there, like just living, you know, they were not hateful or anything, they were just there. Their German people population was more than in other cities so it's something like 1950s and as I as far as I remember the extraction of uranium was exactly during Cold War not during the war which is it was exactly when like if you know the history there was like a nuclear race I think it's called nuclear race when US and Soviets were racing to build a bigger nuke to kill each other it didn't work fortunately that's exactly when Soviet Union was extracting extracting uranium from the shafts in the city I was born in I think it in total 
they extracted something like 10,000 tons, literally tons of kilograms of radioactive material, not pure uranium, but something like uranium oxide, which is still a lot, 10,000 tons. That's, that's a huge number. And yeah, that was extracted. Then after it was all over, after the resources, the mines were exhausted, the people, not the people, the government just didn't do anything really. They kind of just covered the shafts with dirt. Like there are protocols that to cover radioactive mines, which is uh, which is melt a lot of lead, then literally kind of when it's liquid, just pour it into the shaft so it does not get exposed, like a lot of lead. Obviously that wasn't done, that would have cost money, so they just didn't do it. They covered up with dirt and yeah, well, of course it's going to be opened again. Imagine like a shaft and it's just the entrance of it is covered with dirt. It's just even the rain would ruin it over time, over a decade. And that's exactly what happened. There was a disaster in something like 2010 or 7. I don't remember. My mother used to tell me that story. There was like a lightning strike, an earthquake or something like that. Basically what happened is a literally chunk of the mountain slided into the river. The river got blocked and there was a mine shaft in that mountain. It got exposed. The river over flooded. It got all the radioactive material out and into the city. The locals were not told anything about it. Like, they knew disaster is happening, but they didn't know about the radiation. Like, the only people who knew about it was the people who funded, like, the recovery and stuff, which is U.S. and Russia. They, they invested something like, Russia invested $14 million at the time, and U.S. something like $5 million, and the, our government $150,000. <laughs> and yeah I don't know how they dealt with it I remember my mother actually what she said so the water supply was cut off there were literally a like cisterns you know like those things that transfer water from Uzbekistan, they would literally bring water to the city and everybody would line up to get some water. And that's crazy. Same thing about the same thing happened about food. And yeah, the people who cleaned up the mess was actually the military as well, literally just young men almost literally uh, like digging up the city so yeah that's what she told me so the cold war is over uh, the government doesn't take care of it they just cover it up people has to go somewhere so they decide to build a factory a lightning bolt manufacturing factory they do exactly that and it it used to be i think i don't remember like one of the biggest factories in central asia and it might just be still is it's still working not as many people as it used to like in the past it literally every job 95-97% of people were working at the factory whereas right now it's something like 50 
so the factory is dying off as well I think they have some new uh, new machinery to build like LED lights and like fluorescent lights but I don't know to what extent but uh, they have that you could I have seen the light bulbs that were LED that were fluorescent and stuff the quality is pretty good but it's still not enough to sustain the city like most of the money goes to the government people are paid yeah but it's not for like it's not enough for every person you know like if if somebody has a family it's unlikely that they will be able to sustain their entire family as a one person working at the factory anyway so that happened then the city's still there there's actually there's actually a video about the city um, I don't remember his name there's a youtuber I think it's called brave and bold something or communist bold something something like that so he basically travels around the post-soviet countries goes to the oddest cities in the world and my lusu was one of them when i was watching it it was very very sad because it's a place where i grew up at and i still remember the condition it was at it was bad but now that I can look at it more objectively it's in a very very bad state it's the cities the buildings are crumbling uh, like uh, it's old it's just old and I don't know nobody does anything about it yeah very strange thank God my mother moved to the capital out of there because it would have been I would not have been able to record this video right now or even talk like this oh it's just weird man so actually the important part radiation causes cancer right and I have learned about this not about the fact but about what I'm about to tell you today which is the the percentage of people who have cancer in the city is insanely higher than it should be than the other cities are which makes sense right like the radiation and stuff but when I was living there nobody knew about it like I was actually wondering whether you could develop a like a tolerance for radiation right whether you could I don't know force your body to adapt for that you probably can but the the cancer rate is still there there are more people with cancer in the city than in other cities which is nobody talks about it not the media not the government but the fact is there and it makes sense but again when I was living there I was wondering why there aren't many people with cancer now that I think about it because nobody talks about it ah 
so yeah I am probably going to make another video about it perhaps I'm going to visit the city I don't know I could make a good video right in the future so yeah I was born there I lived there for 14 years and it's a miracle that I am normal I guess <laughs>